the first, are you doing two presentations? This is one. No, no, it's only one presentation. Oh, this one. It's only one presentation. You are the A team <coughs> that Steve and D have assembled to help drive their company. The owners of your company don't think of you guys as employees. They think of you as entrepreneurs with the passion and capability of helping them drive their billion dollar potential company. So today is all about kickstarting you and some of your ideas about how you can help them and help yourself drive the value of what's potentially a huge business. You know, it's really hard to be in the business world at all and simply be immune to the sense of what's going on in the business press. Do you remember back in 2009 when Lehman Brothers crashed, the stock market was a disaster, the banks froze, there was no lending. About then I was talking to a lot of business owners. Some of them, in fact many of them, told me that their business revenue had dropped 30, 40, 50 percent. But as I talked to those business owners, they also told me that their profitability only dropped one, two percent or 3%. What do you make of that? Revenue drops 50% and profitability drops 3%. What do you think? Lower cost. Well, you know, that's a possibility, but my sense is that maybe all growth is not equal. Maybe there's a difference between good growth and bad growth. Here's the thought for you. If you go to the airport and you don't know where you want to go, any airplane will get you there. If you're growing your business and you don't know where you want to end up, any customer or prospect will get you there. You see, in that challenging economic environment, I think it was a wake-up call. A wake-up call specifically that not all growth is the same. Specifically, here's a point. Nick. Nick's the owner of a company that's got industrial components. Nick actually was devastated and his revenue dropped from $10 million to $5 million in one year in 2009. The result of simply accepting the customers who came to him. Call that bad growth. In contrast, there's Tina. Tina has a water management company. And in the same year, 2009, her revenue increased from $9 million to $10.5 million. The result of her proactively going after customers she wanted. Call that good growth. So what's the difference between Tina's good growth and Nick's bad growth? The answer is good growth is all about proactive growth. Bad growth is reactive growth. Now we all have growth strategies, but the question you want to ask yourself is, is the strategy you pursue good growth or bad growth? To determine, I suggest you ask yourself three questions. One, what future does your passion dictate? Two, what does a passionate client relationship look like? Three, are you proactively pursuing and exercising your entrepreneurial genius every day. Let's take a look at those three questions one at a time. First, what future does your passion dictate? As passionate business builders, entrepreneurs, your job is to convert growth potential into profitable reality. Now don't confuse that with the concept of strategic planning. That's all about execution. But first you have to be clear on where you want to go. Let passion be your guide. Good growth is passion driven. You see, it's a little bit like building a house. You have to decide what kind of house it's going to be before you start. You might say you're going to build a family, a single family house. That's a little bit like a family business. Or you might say that you want to build an apartment building. 
there were over three hundred thousand dollars of other products per customer you could sell. In order to go from a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand, he realized he had to share his passion to move his clients through various phases from pain to safety to desire. Let me give you an example of what we discovered as we discussed this together. At the pain level, that's where he found his prospects. They had the urgent toxic need that had to be resolved, and luckily he had some unique solutions for it. When that pain was resolved, but only after the pain was resolved, he could then start talking to those same customers about safety. Perhaps offering concepts of 24-hour service, an emergency telephone call, or some backup products. Upselling in traditional language. But only after he had dealt with the first issue, pain. At this level, he could now take his customers to a new height, desire. Because you see, Nick was a genius at understanding his customers' needs. And he could create demand. When we translated this whole cycle of customer annuity, Nick realized that at the pain level, just the pain level, that was $100,000 per client. If he were able to go to the next level, safety, he could upgrade them with many of those $300,000 products that added to the continuity of the relationship. Best of all, when he moved to desire, the relationship was unlimited. For starts, he could take away their issue of toxicity and offer a cradle to grave solution process, get himself a monthly cash flow. It ended up, he was able to go to $750,000 per lifetime relationship. That's a far cry from $100,000 where he started. You see, the value of a passionate customer relationship is the fact that it's profitable client annuity. And that means it's good growth. It's all about a sustainable business model. And that sustainable business model starts with your passion. Do what you love. For those who value most, what you do best. That takes us to the third question. Are you exercising your entrepreneurial genius daily? Before the iPhone, who needed one? Before the internet. Who would have ever used it? <coughs> Entrepreneurs <coughs> like you are special. Entrepreneurs have the ability to create solutions that others want to buy. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the world to exercise your entrepreneurial genius. By nurturing your entrepreneurial genius, you fuel good growth. So you might ask yourself, why wouldn't every company fuel their growth with exercising entrepreneurial genius? The answer is sort of funny. Do you realize that an awful lot of entrepreneurs are embarrassed to share their passion? They say to me, Mr. Panya, they think I'm delusionary if I told them what I was really thinking. Not Tina. Tina was very, very clear about her goal to be a $100 million leader in the marketplace, in the water management field. And she relished every opportunity she had to be able to reach out to employees, vendors, customers, prospects, anybody in the marketplace. Religiously, she exercised her entrepreneurial genius to reach out to new economic opportunities, find new international relationships, hire new talent that would help her get to her next level. She was always focused on where she was going and what she needed to do right now to make it happen. You see, when we talk about exercising your entrepreneurial genius, we're not talking about something in the far future. We're talking about what informs what you do this year, this month, this week, in the next 
next 10 minutes. That's what it takes. So we all know that we have good growth and bad growth. Ask yourself those three questions, and then remember these three observations. Passion-driven growth is not a luxury. It's requirement for safety in today's fast-growing economy, in this fast-changing environment. Secondly, the profitability of good growth is driven by the fact that you get to do what you do best for those who will benefit most. It's your passion driven. That's a sustainable business model that will allow you to always escalate profitability. And finally, exercise your entrepreneurial genius. It's your source of competitive distinction. The right growth for you is safe, good growth. That's what you want to go for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to decide.